out how people living there feel about the EU six months after they voted to leave. And after 10.30 today... Let's go to our correspondent, Phil Bodmer, who is at the scene. Uh, Phil, what more can you tell us about this operation? Broken, and staff failed to help her. She's speaking out this morning because she doesn't want anyone else to go through the same thing. That's coming up after 10. If you'd like to get in touch, all the usual ways. Don't forget, hashtag Victoria Live, and if you text, you'll be charged at the standard network rate. Now, let's catch up with the sport with Jessica. Good morning. Happy New Year. Uh, let's start by talking about um, Pep Guardiola, Manchester City manager. Not a happy man yesterday. Hello, welcome to the programme and a happy New Year. We're live until 11 this morning. Dentists have criticised what they've called the workplace cake culture, saying the sharing of sweet treats in the office is contributing to health problems. They've called for a change in 2017. So is this sensible advice or an attack on the little things that make office life a bit more enjoyable? Do get in touch on everything we're talking about this morning. Use the hashtag Victoria Live and if you text you will be charged at the standard network rate. Our top story today, a man has been shot dead by police in an operation near the M62 motorway in Huddersfield. West Yorkshire police say the incident was not related to terrorism. They added that the operation last night was pre-planned and that three people were arrested. Another two people were arrested in a related vehicle stop in Bradford. The Independent Police Complaints Commission has sent investigators to the scene near the M62. It's the fifth fatal police shooting in England and Wales within nine months. Our Home Affairs correspondent Danny Shaw reports. The Brexit vote came as a shock to many in the political establishment. Yet many of those who voted to leave the EU could have told them that levels of dissatisfaction with Europe, especially over the issue of immigration, meant it should not have come as a surprise. After the vote, we visited Great Yarmouth in Norfolk, which delivered the fifth highest leave vote, with more than 70% of residents voting out. Six months on, as Brexit gets closer, our reporter Michael Cowan has been back to speak to some of those he met at the time to ask them how they feel about it all now. Daniel, that some people are spending 14% of their salary on commuting. What, what sort of proportion of your income are you spending? Well, after my pension and childcare costs, it's nearly a third of my um, take-home pay, and that's not even on my part-time salary. As well. I think it's incredibly unfair. Peter, I said that you spend £4,000 on an annual season ticket. Y you travel on the Southern Rail Network, so yes. you've been affected by the problems there. That yes. doesn't it, of, of what, yes. one um, month? So we get uh, four weeks um, refund. Uh, what Southern Rail is charging, I mentioned, they're, they're pointing out they're giving a month's rebate to, yeah. to compensate for, for the problems on the network. They're also... You know, the simple things in life, catch a train, on time at a schedule. We were hearing from Daniel that um, rail fares here are six times higher than elsewhere in Europe. Prices have gone up by 56% over the past 10 years. Do you think passengers are being ripped off? Me. Because the background to all of this, Kate, is that while government subsidies have decreased by £1.1 billion over the past five years, the fares have gone up by just about the same amount, just a little bit more to cover that. Absolutely. In countries, so in Paris, for example, it would cost you just £61 to travel that same Be distance. Because of much greater subsidy there by the government. Greater subsidy, but also public ownership. Do you think there should be more government subsidy, Jo? Well, I think action needs to be taken because as a part-time worker, I get... Un At what point does it become unviable so you decide that you, you, you can't continue with it? Well, I think you have to think of a longer-term um, goal. Thank you very much for coming in and do let us know what you think about that as well if you're a commuter and uh, you're affected by the increase in prices from today. Now, let's uh, go back to the New Year terror attack in Istanbul. Well, we can talk now to Chris Phillips, a former head of the, like herself, are being targeted. And also Jerry Smith, a terrorism very much indeed for joining us. Um, Chris, first of all, uh, Turkey was on a state of high alert. There were, I think, 17,000 police officers on duty in Istanbul, and yet this still happened. Unfortunately, there's no such thing as 100% security. Turkey knows that it's... A, a particular aspect of, of where it seems the person that did this came from and then went back to you and say, you know, it looks like a potential change. How easy is it to spot any trends in what we're seeing? Because, I mean, there are obviously some similarities between attacks that are happening and, and others just completely different again. Yeah, I'd say... 2017, 2016, but I do want predictions for you, from you for 2017. Um, 
so Rosalind, do you think we will start to get some clarity? Because obviously the government position is triggering Article 50 by the end of March. Absolutely. I think, the, Rachel, how, how much of a problem is that for the government? Because hearing our voters there, I mean, there's anger out there that the clarity isn't coming through, isn't it? I mean, in a sense, you know, if Marine Le Pen wins in France, which we might get into, in which case us leaving Britain is going to look like a teddy bear's picnic because... That means some Conservative grandee would become Prime Minister. It, it, Dead man's going to carry on walking. Steve? Yeah, uh, work out the way those people want. They're not going to blame the person they voted for. They're going to... Spain, Greece, spin-off, and you have Germany, Belgium, mm. Luxembourg, and... Was, she was also helpless. She decided that they would get me off at the next um, station to see if I could use the, the toilet and then get me on board again. But when you go to that particular process where you, 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 know, you were in the hands of others desperately needing help and, and there was really nothing that, that, that they could do. Actually on that train, you're talking about it now, which presumably isn't an easy thing to do, but you're talking about you, you wanted to actually start to talk about it publicly. He has tweeted to say the train should have been withdrawn and is so courageous and has nothing to be ashamed of. Thank you. Thank you both very much. And um, there has been a, a brief statement from cross country trains, as I mentioned, saying that what happened to Anne was completely unacceptable and uh, they are investigating. They say clearly the circumstances of the journey were unacceptable. It's the beautiful picture of, of Sarah. She looks absolutely gorgeous. Tell, tell us about Sarah about your daughter, how important is it to both of you that you see justice done? Well, uh, we make what happened last year at the Oscars uh, a, th a thing of last year and, and for it to be different this year because there are issues of, of race being looked at in some of these movies. I mean, they, they won't have gone into production so quickly that it's in re response to what happened. Definitely not. That's, that's an interesting look at American history and the, the race laws, Noah, in that particular movie.